Welcome back to Throttle Stop Garage. In this episode, we'll be installing seat belts. Okay, so we're going to be putting seat belts in the car today. That's the uh, that's the goal. Uh, this is actually day three uh, worth of work on this particular project. There's been lots of things going on. It's it's Christmas time right now, so I've I've got a few days off work, so I'm out here in the garage whenever I can be, and struggling to get some seatbelts put in this car. Again, the reason that I stepped away from the driveline tunnel, and I'm going to go back to the driveline tunnel in the next episode, uh, but for this episode, we're going to be doing seatbelts, primarily because, of course, uh, the driveline tunnel has a seatbelt mount on it. So I thought I would stop the driveline tunnel until I knew where the seatbelt mounts actually needed to go, and once I have the seatbelt mounts uh, sorted out, then we go back in, build the driveline tunnel, and everything turns out just the way we want. So as much as we think that we might be going you know, back instead of forward, Again, this is just all part of the million details that you do have to look after whenever you're doing a project like this. Okay, so these particular cars, the, the, the Volvo Canadian slash Amazon slash 122 slash whatever you want to call it, uh, they were the first cars to come from the factory with seat belts fitted. So if you're ever wondering why a uh, 716 fine is the uh, UNF is the, is the actual bolt size, um, that's the car that did it to you, right? There's no other reason why that would be that way other than they set the standard. So uh, try to find 716s fine bolts. They're not as easy to come by. Uh, I was able to find some nuts and bolts in my uh, local hardware store, so took advantage of that and started making my brackets. Now, you never uh, you never go designing seatbelt brackets around the notion that you're going to crash the car, but you do think about it a lot uh, at those times where you're thinking, oh gee, you know, that's why we're putting them in here, safety first. So we want really good stout brackets. Now, the again, the lack of mount points, the, the shoulder mount point is still in the car and we're gonna be using that, the, the standard stock one. The Also the bottom point for the real retractor piece. Uh, you can you know, actually use the stock location. So any of you that are working on, on these cars, you know, you can feel free to use those. You're just missing a few of the mount points. Uh, so you're missing um, both of the bottom mount points, the mount, points for both the buckle and the mount point uh, for the the solid bolted inside uh, and don't bolt all of this stuff together don't don't put pieces on top of pieces we'll talk about that in a little bit it's just a bad sort of bad engineering practice when you're putting belts together like, like that anyway so I ordered some seat belts custom custom seat belts for the car uh, they're, they're they're I mean there's no standard fitment, right? So whatever you do, you're gonna be uh, on one of the online suppliers. Uh, and we're gonna have a little reveal, right? I'm not gonna tell you who it is. I don't know if you want me to tell you who it is. Um, but there were a number of things that I didn't like about uh, the seat belts when I got them in. So we're gonna cover a few of those and then we'll see all the workarounds that I've just been doing in order to make these things actually work um, to a degree that I think is acceptable again. I'm, I'm driving this car. I, I'm building it for myself. I'm building it for you know me and my wife to go tootling around in, and uh, I I just I want to live right. So I I don't want um, crappy seat belts and old seat belts and reused parts and that kind of thing. This isn't the place to economize because brand new belts were they were a hundred bucks a piece something like that. They're not expensive. So I'm putting belts in the back on the off chance someone's ever riding in the back of the car, uh, and new belts in the front. So. Uh, I bought cable style receivers. That's what these are called. <laughs> you receive into them. Okay, so I, I bought those uh, and I was super happy with them. You know, you get them out of the box, you think, well, that's going to work really right, so well. So we want the buttons going that way so that when you clip into it on the outside edge, you can push the button. Um, problem then, problems then started. <laughs> It's always a problem, uh, which is this end, this end of the buckle. So the, the end of this uh, cable uh, that goes in, they've actually not made them as a sided part. So there's no siding to it. So if you mounted them on, so there's, you can see they've, they've put that in and swaged it. Okay, and it's swaged over so that it, it can sit flat on something on this side. There's just a bit of heat shrink tube of some sort covering the, the big, um, aircraft cable that's inside here now that means because it isn't a sided part you know when you put it on one side of the tunnel or the other side of the tunnel on one of the sides you're going to be jammed up against this and you're not going to be able to correctly uh, get that thing bolted in place so this is going to represent the first problem 
So I contacted the manufacturer and I, I asked, you know, if I bought the wrong part, like, did I, did, did, was it me? Um, it wasn't me. They just suggested that, you know, I just stick some washers. They just, just stack some washers in there. I, I'm not a stacked washer kind of guy. That's uh, poor engineering, <laughs> stacked washers. Okay, so I've, I've gone and cut a piece of 3 8 plate, uh, drilled a hole, and that's the, what I need for the offset. So that fits in here, okay, so the bolt can then go through both pieces. This will be welded, this little spacer will be welded onto the tunnel. And then that allows that, I mean, it, it's not that it's, it's not meant to move, it's not meant to rotate, uh, but I do not want it jammed. I mean, on the off chance this does need to pull into a position, it doesn't need to be jammed up against the firewall. Again, I'm sure it's no big deal and I'm worrying about nothing. But if I'm going to have something bolted together, I don't want it bolted so that the mount faces aren't uh, square and in the right location. <laughs> it's not Hollywood people. So that was the first issue. So you think, okay, that's fine. Uh, the other parts are, are, are here as you see them. Okay, so we've got a retractor that as long as it's sitting in the, in the vertical position, it will go on. Again, there's just one bolt that'll hold that in place. It's got a little plastic cover on it, so it'll look just fine in the car then of course we're all familiar with how this works right like every airline uh, steward you've ever seen uh, so we're going to clip that in so that's going to go across our hips and bolt in place then you've got the shoulder the shoulder bolt again that bolts into the stock location that's not a problem and then we have the next problem <laughs> which is this part. So this is the part that needs to go uh, down to the floor or down, in this case, it'll mount to the A pillar or B pillar. So it needs to mount there. Now they've bent it, right? So they've put a bend on the thing. And again, if you mount this, it doesn't matter which side you mount it. I've got two of these belts. Again, I asked, I said, did I get two right-handed belts? And, and not, no, I didn't. They're both the same actually. So if we string this up and we get all our belts running straight, then the buckle, this buckle is always mounted like that. It's gonna catch here. Like it's, this is just bizarre to me. Why when they're sewing this together, take that out of it is, uh, I, uh, boggles the mind right it just it defies any logic that i can understand so they didn't do that and both of them are the same and there's no way to hang these belts without having that backwards and if they put it on the other way you're probably okay like i have no idea how this is supposed to work so okay we're just getting those brackets laid out for the rear seat belt so just uh Quick mark off with some soapstone before the plasma cutter comes out here, and we'll uh, we'll make uh, make a mess of those really quickly. So this doesn't take very long. To think about them quite carefully. I didn't want to cut all the way through to the other side. I wanted to leave a little lip flange all the way around the edge. All right, out comes the wheel of death here, and we'll get all the mill scale and everything else buffed off these really quickly. Um, yeah, that's real time, folks. That just took a sec. All right, a little bit of deburring, and we should be ready to go with the side plates, the top plates. It's actually a lot of work and a little bracket, right? Holy cow. All right, so there it is, mostly done. I'm just welding those side plates on now, and uh, they get fully welded all the way around just for strength. And um, with nut plates and other things done, we're pretty much ready to install them. We're marking out a few placements here on that rear parcel shelf, right in the center of the ribs where I designed them to go. And a single spot weld is gonna hold the, um, the nut plates in place. I think that's more than enough to, to just locate them while I'm putting those things in and out. What are they gonna go in and out once ever? <laughs> so easy enough to do. All right, now I'm starting in on the plates for the uh, front seat belts. So these are the little nuts that are gonna go inside of various sections, uh, some spacers and other things. 
that are needed for these parts. So a little bit of TIG. Jeez, I haven't TIG welded in a long time. It's nice to get back into the rhythm of things. Captive nut. That's going to be going inside the frame. Maybe I should hold it in frame, right? Okay, so that's that. Um, there's the other one. So I made two of these. Okay, so we've welded the nut onto there again, remove the finish and blah, blah, blah. And then I built a great big spacer here, right, that you can see. And I've just TIG welded that on. And that spacer is designed so that when those two pieces are together and bolted, then I've got lots of clearance. Again, your, your seat's going to move a little bit. It's not going to move much. But any little bit that it does move, we want that to be in place and we want it to be held in nicely. We don't want to be uh, bolting stuff down onto the webbing and that kind of thing. I've been super careful with the finish of all of this um, in terms of making sure that I've got real nice radiuses on everything. Right? I don't want anything in here that could possibly damage the belt if it touches or rubs against it. So anyway, with that... We're pretty much ready to go. I'm just going to, um, well, I'll take you inside and show you how all this mounts up. Okay, so there you can see the part that I built here for, this is the back seat. So I built that part for the back seat. It's made out of uh, two by three hundred wall tubing and the seat belt retractor reel mounts on top of it just like that bolts in then I was thinking I don't know bound to happen every once in a while there we go okay so that hole is actually where the stock belt if there were seat belts in the back were supposed to come through I have no idea how these were supposed to mount I've seen various different fitments and I made some little nice uh, little nut um, blocks there because you're never going to be able to bolt this all together with glass and everything in the car so just doing a little bit of forward thinking. So those uh, are welded onto the body and ready to go for when all this goes together. So it's quite an easy installation all from inside the car. I'm going to need a mount point behind the seat down in here to one side and over here to the other side. So that's going to go in. Okay, so that's where the shoulder loop mounts up there. And the retractor, if I can, there it is, hiding in the corner, it's bolted in there. Then this part, of course, is gonna go over to the tunnel. Sorry, that goes over there. And the belt comes over and will clip in here. So that's why I needed seats in and other things in the car is to try to get this all sorted out now we're we're getting there but like i said we'll get these back uh, parts put in and anyway we'll get all of this bracketry and other stuff installed in short order here and then be done with this project so i almost forget what it's like to drive this car <clears throat> All right, we're just doing a quick test fitment here. Trying to get a few things figured out. Uh, worst possible scenario, everything's wrong and it'll feel terrible. Best possible scenario, everything's going to be okay. <laughs> so we have to get some seat belts put in the car. So in order to do that, I have to check and see where my seat rails are going to go. I had already worked all of this out, of course, ahead of time. But I'm finding that with the pedal box the way it is, uh, I needed the seat back a little bit more. So I had to bring the seat back, which uh, isn't actually going to screw anything up too terribly. Uh, I put the gear shift finally on the transmission. As soon as I put the seat in, I thought, oh, that's way too far forward. <laughs> of course, this transmission already comes with a, a crank gear lever. So it ends up feeling when I'm sitting about where I would think I would sit based on foot articulation feels pretty good then a test fit the steering wheel this isn't the steering wheel we're going to be using it's just the same size 
uh, so I can get a, a pretty good feel of where things are, have a look at my arm position, decide if it's comfortable, and then, of course, importantly, I can get my arm out the window. You can't cruise without your arm out the window. Yeah, I think this is going to be just, just fine. Uh, one thing I'm really happy with is the height here. Like the, the movement between my hand and the gear shift is just, that's as natural as it can be. So that's really great. Quite looking forward to that. So make vroom vroom noises in your car <laughs> as often as you can. Okay, that's it. Um, time to get back to work and quit playing. I gotta put all this stuff back away. <laughs> I don't wanna get it all dirty. And off we go. Getting out of this thing when the seats aren't in it is a bit of a trick. Well, it's time to get these parts laid out. So just make some quick, uh, quick measurements and marks. Then, uh, yeah, that's the rear seat belt part. Just gonna figure out kind of where that's gonna set up nicely. Uh, and then with a hole saw, we're gonna drift the holes into the various panels. So we're gonna put them into the A pillar and into the, the side frame there. And then the one nut plate that goes, it sort of sits above the differential. That's the one I'm drilling right there. So that all has to go into place. A quick vacuum out just to try to keep the, keep the place a little clean, holy. Lots of dirt. Um, anyway, then I just uh, get everything cleaned off here, including the galvanizing on the on the those sill pa uh, panels. There, they're they're galvanized. So don't forget if you're gonna do this kind of thing, you gotta cut all the way through that galvanizing. Don't try to weld that stuff. It just doesn't. Zinc doesn't want to weld. Anyway, and then these pop in um, pretty easily. For this episode, we've got the seatbelts installed now. Uh, super happy with the way the installation went. Turn some lights on in here as I get rolling today. So we'll finish these up uh, yesterday afternoon. Got uh, both the back seatbelts in. You can see all of the plates are welded in place. I've got that belt. Um, uh, put in well you sort of see how that's going to end up despite the lights giving you a bit of glare there but uh, yeah so I'm real happy with the way that all turned out everything seems real solid uh, it's great no time like the present to actually get the job done uh, so that ended up really well uh, super happy with the outcome actually they uh, everything fits in just great I uh, had some comments actually on the Facebook page with people wondering, geez, why didn't I just go with the stock placement? Uh, there is no stock placement for these things on this particular car. I mean, I've seen lots of these in, in, in my life. This isn't my first or my only 122. I've had several, uh, or at least I've worked on several. Um, I've never actually seen any of them with, uh, I mean, they all have in the back, they all have um, provision. Uh, they have the hole in the parcel shelf, right? They've got the... Um, 
Uh, they've got a spot on the, the C pillar for to attach a shoulder loop. Uh, there's a few other things that are available in the car, but I uh, all would have required extra welding. Uh, lots of guys hang the the uh, the real part and then bolt it into the fender well. well. My fender well's moved in a little bit, right? So it's not in the right spot exactly. I mean, it'll still work, but whatever. So anyway, lots of that stuff would have been a say a dealer added option or or something like that if if it was ever done. Uh, again, it's lots of these cars have there's differences everywhere. So. Uh, this car never had it. Um, again, it had bits and pieces, uh, little uh, pieces to bolt things here and there, but not enough of it, and certainly not in standard sizes either. The, the rear seat belts, like the rear seat belt anchor points uh, towards the middle, as well as the shoulder loops, were uh, were smaller, were smaller than what was uh, what was done before. So um, anyway. I went with uh, with everything uh, to a modern standard uh, on this particular car. So all of the brackets and everything else is all done 7 16 fine. Um, so that's the size that, that's being used and that's the way we're going to go with it. Right, so that's it for this episode. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, appreciate all the, the comments and the little questions and things that come in. It, uh, you know... Sometimes it's lonely out here in the garage. Nice to hear from you guys. Uh, anyway, uh, until next time, um, yeah, stay on it, keep working on it, and don't forget, eventually you get it done. All right, that's it.